for his milestone 25th episode here on the monitor, UGA associate professor Dr. Nick Furman, also known as Ranger Nick, wanted to do something really special, something hot off the presses, so to speak. Yeah, because as we all know, he's passionate about what he does. The fire burns within him. However, on this day, the fire was burning around him. We'll talk about being fired up this month. I certainly am. You know, in the same way that a doctor prescribes a drug for someone, the U.S. Forest Service is doing a prescribed burn right here in Georgia. And I'm hanging out with Holly and Tim today with the U.S. Forest Service. We want to talk a little bit about the planning, implementing, and then evaluating stages of forest fires, prescribed burns. Holly, talk to us a little bit about how your agency plans for something like what's going on today. So it starts with the NEPA process, which is environmental planning, and we go through working with our communities and our partners to look at the land, see what might need to be fixed, what is its existing condition, and then uh, decide what we need to do to bring it back to where it should be. And prescribed fire is uh, one of our largest tools that we use to do that. It's wonderful because out here in this land, we've got a lot of coarse woody debris, a lot of dead wood out there. We've got a lot of fuel on site and a lot of wildlife benefit from positive disturbances like the red cockaded woodpecker, maybe something that might be seen in this part of Georgia, right? That's correct. So we don't have a red cockaded woodpecker here in this unit here today, but we do have some in the area. And then also the wildlife that will benefit from this burn today are the uh, bobwhite quail, wild turkey, species like that that depend on the open uh, savanna grass-like habitat to survive. Amazing. And some of this kind of stuff, and we're out here right here, the disturbance is positively influencing wildlife. Let's learn a little bit more about how we're implementing and then evaluating the effect of something like this, Holly. That's great. So Holly was talking about the importance of disturbance in a pine ecosystem like this. Holly, talk to us about what did a place like this used to look like hundreds of years ago? So before Western settlement, two, three hundred years ago, this would have been an open park-like savanna with uh, grasses and fob understory and tall, you know, towering uh, longleaf pine trees is, is what it primarily would have been. So now the longleaf pines, here's the deal with how special these trees are. They depend on fire. Their cones are coated in wax and they require fire to come through, melt the waxy coating along the cone and release those seeds. Well, in an area like we're in today, fire and smoke, and folks have got to be wondering, what about some small mammals, reptiles, amphibians that might be out there in this? One particular reptile that we might find out there happens to be the state reptile of Georgia, the gopher tortoise, and here's one that we found out here. Just look at the face on that. Just a gorgeous little turtle. But I want to talk about the importance of the gopher tortoise, a keystone species. Without this species, just like a center stone in an archway, without that center stone, the other stones fall down. This species digs gigantic burrows under the ground. Folks, the size of a school bus under the ground, a burrow. Animals require that burrow to survive a fire and they go into that burrow so without the gopher tortoise who gophers in the ground so many of those animals would be at their detriment from a fire like this so we are so thankful for animals like the gopher tortoise here in Georgia and especially in the longleaf pine ecosystem that's wonderful so it's a sunny beautiful day in Georgia you might be thinking at home, does the U.S. Forest Service just decide willy-nilly, ah, let's go ahead and burn some stuff up today? Holly, I'm assuming they don't. Of course, what kinds of things go on in preparation for an event like what's going on behind us today? That's a great question. Um, there's a huge field of study that goes into uh, both the planning and the implementation of a prescribed burn the day of. Um, so what we do is uh, once we have the environmental policy in place, approval to be able to go out and do it, and we know that the forest needs it, um, we'll look at a bunch of different conditions. So conditions like wind speed, uh, temperature, fuel moisture, and by fuel moisture, you know, how wet is the stuff on the ground? So a wet log won't burn. Sure. Um, we look at all of those conditions to see are things right? Are we going to get the right effects um, for, for that fire? And then we look at the burn unit itself and look at natural boundaries like um, water or roads that we can use uh, to be minimally invasive without putting in uh, hand lines or dozer lines if we can avoid it if possible. Holly, I'm here in this helicopter overhead. We've got lots of folks on the ground with the fire lines, making sure using this road that things don't get out of control. Mm -hmm. This helicopter in the sky, is this associated with this too? 
Absolutely. So helicopters are really the workhorse of prescribed fire in the southeast. And uh, we use helicopters to burn out the interior of a prescribed fire block. We use okay. roads primarily to burn out. So firefighters are carrying drip torches along the roads. That's what you see here behind yeah, me is this fire yeah. line. And uh, so we burn out along the roads, black it in. Um, and then a helicopter, like you're hearing up above us right now, will come in and drop uh, little sphere ignition devices about the size of a ping pong ball from the helicopter. And those ignite on contact. And that's how we burn burn off uh, the interior of that burn after we've blackened all the way around the edges. Interesting. So on the outside, kind of like a donut, you're taking care of the outside first and then the inside is taken from the air. Man, this is amazing. Look at this. Just cool stuff. The number of folks it takes to do something like this today. Look at that. My gosh. Amazing. This is excellent. Right, thanks. Well, we got to give a big shout out to Holly Craig here. Holly, thanks so much for hanging out with Absolutely. us today. What a cool thing. Fired up about it for sure. Blazing new trails, no pun intended, with the Georgia Farm Monitor. Hey, this has been a blast. If you want to learn more about this, there's a link that you can follow from the U.S. Forest Service to learn more about burn areas here in Georgia that they're managing with prescribed fires. While you're on the Internet, Check out the Georgia Farm Monitor Facebook page. And while you're on there, hop on over to the Ranger Nick Facebook page. I love you for doing that stuff. And until next time, for the Georgia Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick reminding you that holly enthusiasm is contagious. It burns in all of us, right? It does. No pun intended. So pass that stuff on. Y'all have a great rest of the month. We'll look forward to seeing you right back here next time. See ya.